Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Buck Rogers is on the air, brought to you by the makers of Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle, those delicious frozen confections on a stick. Now here's a message from the famous winner of the typical American boy contest, Popsicle Pete. Hey, kids, you should see the camera I picked out for you as a Popsicle present, a real movie camera. You can get it free. Just save bags from Popsicle, Fudgicle, or Creamsicle. You get lots of swell gifts for those bags, hundreds of them, flashlight, Buck Rogers rocket ship, Tennis racket, wrist watch, beautiful dolls, swell jewelry. Just save bags from Popsicle, Creamsicle, or Fudgicle on a handy stick. And when you're warm, isn't it great to have a big, cold, delicious Popsicle, Creamsicle, or Fudgicle? Boy, are they good, and do they last. They're good for you, too. Pure and nourishing. And wrapped in those valuable gift bags. The biggest nickel's worth you can get. Get the free Popsicle gift list in your ice cream store. It's got a free coupon on it worth ten bags. And now for more of the thrilling adventures of Buck Rogers in the 25th century. In our last episode, you remember, Buck, Wilma, and Dr. Hewer were at the Central Spaceport, getting ready to make a test flight in a rocket ship equipped with a new invention called the gyrocosmic relativator. But before they could board it, the huge craft took off right before their very noses. And as we pick up our story tonight, we find them there at the spaceport standing where the ship was parked and trying to figure out who or what made it take off. Here we go, 500 years into the future. Well, there goes our rocket ship. I don't understand. Buck, who could have taken it? Beyond me, Wilma. And the new gyrocosmic relativators on board. Right. That's why it was able to take off so quickly. Then whoever took it must have known about that relativator. You're probably right, Wilma. But Black Barney's the only person I've told anything. Dr. Hewer. Yes, Buck? That message that came in from Central Radio Bureau just before we came outside here to get into that ship. Still at Cain and Ardella. Oh, sure. If they've just escaped from the municipal prison, the one thing they need most is a rocket ship. And those two wouldn't waste any time getting it. You're right. Yes, sir. They probably came right out here to the spaceport, saw our test ship standing there with nobody around it, and hopped right off in it. Look there. Huh? They must have used one of those little air roads to there to fly over here. Unless they all belong to the workmen out here. They certainly couldn't have walked out here in such a short time. Well, come along anyway. Well, where to, Doctor? Uh, we'll take one of these little roads and go back to my laboratory. Okay, come on. You think there's some connection between this business of the stolen rocket ship and the report about the ransacking of your laboratory? Exactly. Uh, get in, Wilma. Right. Uh, go ahead, Doctor. I'll take the control. Thank you. All ready, Buck? Here we go. Now, we may all be a little excited over the events of the past few minutes, but it's necessary that we take stock of the situation as calmly as possible and decide what we're going to do. Good idea. The first thing that smacked of trouble was the call from Central Radio Bureau, saying someone had broken into your laboratory right after we'd left it. Yes. And right on top of that came word of Kane and Ardella's escape. Yes. Immediately afterward, our experimental rocket ship took off right in front of our faces. Then it's easy enough to figure out... Kane and Ardella broke out of prison, ransacked your laboratory for whatever equipment they could get hold of, raced over to the spaceport and made a quick takeoff. Sounds logical enough to me. I still don't see how they covered so much ground in such a short space of time. All depends on how long they were free before they were missed, Doctor. Yes. Well, we'll find out when we reach my laboratory if the rocket police are still there. Right. But I wonder what happened to Black Barney. He and Willie were going to visit the spaceport. This new invention of Dr. Yours on this here new test ship don't work. Yes, sir, Mr. Barney. I guess you're right, all right. Sure. I got all the power on she'll take, and we ain't even begun to move yet. What it was supposed to do was let us take off and be going a thousand miles an hour right away, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, take a look out of the metallic glass window and see if Lieutenant Wilmer and Captain Rogers and Dr. Yours coming out of the spaceport office to get into this here thing. Yes, sir. Well, uh... Are they coming, Willie? Or did the big rocket blast scare them away? Well, what is it? What about it? Why don't you answer me? 
Mr. Barney. Willie, what's the matter? You look like you just saw a ghost. Look, look out of the window, Mr. Barney. Huh? Sure, sure, I... Huh? Hey, hey, Willie! The earth, it's a couple of hundred miles below us. Uh, but uh, we didn't take off, you, you hear me? We, we didn't take off. It must be Dr. Ewer's invention. That's what did it. Oh, but it couldn't be in the color. We didn't take off, I tell you. Yeah, that's what it is, sure. Boy, that's wonderful. Certainly had me scared for a minute, though. Yeah, me too. Why, Willie, you, you mustn't let a little thing like that scare you. And don't you see? What we're doing is uh, making the first official drying out trip of the of the first rocket ship that was ever equipped with this, uh, this uh, new gyro thing. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. And uh, we're saving them all the trouble of having to try it out. I thought you said you wanted to take off in it before they could, so there wouldn't be any danger for them. Yeah, that's right. For me and you to try it out is all okay on account of it. If it didn't work and the whole place blew up, it wouldn't make no difference. But I, I wouldn't want Lieutenant Wim or Captain Rogers or, or Dr. Ewer to take no chances with something new like this. So uh, that's why we've done it. Boy. Certainly a great invention. How does it work? Well, there's a lot of technical things about it I'm afraid you wouldn't understand, Willie. Well, uh, I can try to understand, Mr. Barney. Tell me. Okay. Now, uh, this here is a uh, machine bolted down right here. Uh-huh. And the stuff on the side of it here is some kind of electric cell. Photoelectric cells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. But what are all these gears for? Willie, uh, that's what they call this sort of protono, hypnoto, deutrono, uh, tele radio, and all that sort of stuff. Huh? Uh, you see, the gyro Thomas stuff on the super neutron goes around the ultra hyper thing uh, that's connected with the physic uh, elementary. Whoever ran this laboratory of mine certainly made a good job of it. Yes, but Dr. Hewer. Yes, Wilma? Where are the rocket police? Why are they going to wait here for us? Oh, uh, here's your answer, Wilma. Yes? What is it, Buck? A note from their captain. Yes. Oh, Dr. Hewer. I have just received word of Kane Ardala break from municipal prison. I believe that to be a logical place for us to center activities. Signed, Captain Barton. And to be honest with you, I'm glad that they aren't here. Why do you say that, Doctor? It'd be much easier for just the three of us to look around here and see what's been taken. That's true. Well, where do we start? Calling Dr. Ewer. Subcosmic right? radio. It's Black like Barney Dr. calling. Ewer. I'll take it. I wonder where he can be calling from. Uh, well, Barney, this Barney is Dr. Ewer. Calling Dr. Ewer. Well, yes, this is Dr. Ewer. Well, <laughs> well, Dr. Ewer, well, what do you think of me and Willie saving you folks a lot of risk and trouble, huh? Where are you, Barney, and what are you doing? Uh, don't you know? No, of course not. Well, uh, uh, then guess. I dare you. No, 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 no Barney, you tell me. Why, well, Doctor... Me and Willie is flying around up here in space uh, trying out the new uh, gyro thing of yours. What? Listen. You mean you're in the test ship we had waiting for us at the spaceport? Sure. Well, but Barney, how... Well, we figured the best way to keep you folks from risking yourselves by taking off with this new contraption was for us to do it. Oh, thank goodness it wasn't Kane and Ardella. Barney. Yeah? Is everything all right? No trouble? No, sir. The ship works fine. Of course it took me and Willie a couple of minutes or two to get it all organized out. How do you mean? Well, uh, when I first turned on the power, we didn't feel the ship moving under us. It, it was just the same thing as though we had the rocket power on, only we didn't have it on. Uh, just like uh, we was being held down by a big rope or stuff. But at the same time, uh, we could hear the motors roaring. Splendid. Then the new gyrocosmic relativator works perfectly. Oh, good for you, Doctor. Sure, Doctor. It works fine. Uh, how about navigation with it? Any difference? No, not a bit of difference, Doctor. Well, then, even if you did deprive us of the privilege of making the first test with it, I'm mighty gratified to know the new gyrocosmic relativator works all right. And now... Uh, well, uh, listen, Doctor. Uh, yes? Uh, well, would you please kind of do me a personal favor? What, what is it, Barney? Uh, will you please say the name of uh, this thing over again? Why, surely. You see, I started explaining it all out uh, to Willie here. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when I come to telling him its name, it, uh, it kind of slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, Doctor. I always got so many important things to think about all the time that them little details kind of slipped my mind. <laughs> Poor old Barney. So if you don't mind, uh, 
Would you say it for me just one more piece? Barney, it's a gyrocosmic relativator. <laughs> you hear that, Willie? Yes, sir. Gyrocosmic relativator. That's it. <laughs> you see, Doctor, didn't I always tell you that my Willie was going to be a great man someday? And that proves it. Well, now, Barney. Uh, yeah? We're having a little trouble down here, and we're badly in need of that ship you're in. No kidding, Doctor. Yes. And here's what I want you to do. Yeah? Cut off the power right away. Yes, sir. Good. Now, just as soon as we've finished talking, face that ship you're in around and head back for Earth just as fast as you safely can. We'll be waiting for you at the Central Spaceport. Okay, Doctor. We'll turn back on the uh, power again and head back for Earth as fast as we can. Uh, but uh, would you mind telling me what the trouble is? Killer Kane. Kane? Yes. He and Ardela have escaped. Say, that's awful. That's why we need the rocket ship with the elevator. Well, Doctor, uh, we'll head right back again. All right, Barney. Signing off. Yes, sir, signing off. You hear, hear that, Willie? Yes, sir. It's pretty serious, isn't it? Of course it is. And I guess they don't only need a rocket ship down there. Huh? They probably need me, too. When people like Kane and Adela get loose, Willie, there's, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Well, then, let's get started back to Earth. Yes, sir. Hang on for power. Yes, sir. Everywhere they go, that's trouble. I know it. Killer Kane's dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Yes, sir. Uh, why, if he was to see you coming at him, he'd like us not pull out a rocket pistol or a disintegrator and blow you. Where are you? Oh, you aren't afraid of him, are you, Mr. Barney? Oh, me? Yes, sir. Of course I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Me afraid of Killer Kane. <laughs> That's a good big joke, that is. <laughs> well, Barney, huh? I can't tell you how glad I am to know that. Killer Kane! Oh, listen, you exactly must right, no, no, Willie. No, 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 Killer Kane. Well, with Kane right there aboard Black Barney's rocket ship, things don't look so good. But you're looking pretty good, Popsicle Pete. And where's that song you wrote? Gosh, I can't sing for all these people. Oh, sure you can. Go ahead. They're all your pals. All right. Here goes. Popsicle, popsicle, fresh fruit ice is on a stick. They're so good and they're so big. Popsicle, popsicle, save the bags and get a gift with popsicle. Well, that was perfectly terrific, Pete. And everybody loves popsicles, those great big fresh fruit ices on a handy stick. And the bags are just as good as money for wonderful free gifts. Popsicles are made fresh every day from fine, wholesome ingredients. Doesn't it make your mouth water just to think how good they taste in all those fresh fruit flavors and how long they last? The best, biggest nickels worth anywhere. And don't forget, fellas and girls... Save those bags from Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle. And get those free presents. A camera, a wristwatch, jewelry, fishing tackle, hundreds of swell gifts. You'd better save bags every day. 